So here I have is a Lutron insulation sheet. And on the back side, in the important notes, number four says only one sensing switch can be used in a three-way multi-location application. We'll see about that. Hello my friends, welcome and thanks for joining my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kevin. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install two Lutron occupancy sensor switch on a three-way circuit and have them working at the same time. Okay, here we go. Here's a wire diagram I drew. I hope you will understand it. I will explain each part step by step. One of the first things you will need to do is locate the power source. The easiest way to do that is using a voltmeter, but if you don't have a voltmeter, it's okay. You can do process of elimination. The power source is fed to one of the three-way boxes. You will have 50% chance of getting it right if you don't have a voltmeter. That's still pretty good. If you get it wrong, you can just repeat the steps in the other box and continue. Before taking off the old wires, you should turn off the breaker just to be safe. We will start off with the switch box with the power source side. If you haven't figured out your power source, that's okay. We'll pretend it's the power source side. We're going to do process of elimination. First, we will take the ground wire and bond it to the box. Next, we are going to splice three black wires together. The black wire from the power source, the 14-2, and the black wire from the 14-3, and lastly, the single black wire from the switch, closest to the corner. By doing this, I have created constant power supply to the other three-way switch box. So now both boxes are supplied with power. Now let's join up all the white wires together. The white wire from the 14-2 power source, the white wire from the switch, and the white wire from the 14-3 travelers. Now let's join the black remaining wire from the switch to the red wires of the 14-3 travelers. The blue wire on the switch we do not use, we can just cap it off. Now moving on to switch box number two, let's bond the ground wire to the box. Next on the black wire of the corner of the switch, we will join that with the black wire of the 14-3 travelers. Next, we are going to splice the remaining black wire from the switch with the 14-2 black wire from the light fixture and also the red travelers 14-3 together. Now we will splice the final white wires together the wire from the switch, the wire from the 14-2 from the light fixture, and the final wire from the 14-3 travelers. And for the blue wire, we will do the same. Cap it off, we won't be using it. Before putting the switches back into the wall, you should test your system to make sure if it works. You may turn on the breakers back on and test your system. If it's working properly, the lights will be on and both switches will be working. We're going to remove this switch really quick. First, we want to take off the plate cover. Now the wire going to the black screw, this is either the power source or the black wire coming from the light fixture. And then the other two wires, the red and the black wire, these are your travelers. So important not to mix up these two black wires. So let's say you do get the two black wires mixed up, but no need to worry. So you can see the 14-2 on the right side. This is either the power source or coming from the light fixture. And here on the left, you have three wires, this is a three-way wire. So that's how you can tell which black is which. The next step is to determine which switch box has the power source. It will make things a lot smoother during the installation process. If you don't know which, which box is the power source, you will have to do some troubleshooting and some trial and error. The easiest way to find out which switch box has a power source is by using a multimeter. 
When doing its test, make sure the breaker is not turned off and having the lights switched off. Turn on the multimeter to volts and then place one of the leads on the box or on the ground wire. Make sure you have good contact and the other lead on the black screw or either the 14-2 black wire. You'll get a reading of zero or either close to 120. So I have a reading of zero or close to zero. That means this is not the power source. If I get a reading of close to 120, that means I'll have the power source. So this is once again, not the power source. So my power source is on the other switch. One more thing, before we start, remember to turn off your breakers first, just in case. I don't want you guys to get shocked. On my three-way circuit, this is the power side. We're going to start off here first. And then on the switch, here we have these four wires. We have the neutral, the black and blue for the travelers, but we won't be using the blue. We're gonna cap this off and tuck it away. And a black wire by itself. We're gonna splice the white wires first, all the white wires together. Next, I am going to splice my traveler wire, the black traveler wire, with the red wire on the 14-3. Now we're at the other switch box. This wire is the 14-2 coming from a light fixture. These two wires is the 14-3, the travelers. We're gonna start off again, splicing all the white wires together first. And next, we're gonna put this 14-2, the power source, and the black 14-3 traveler together with the last wire on the switch. I'm just gonna temporarily attach this together just to show you guys. Here we have the ground wire. This is kind of pointless because this device is plastic, so it won't do anything. I'm gonna tuck this in the box. I'll place this here, right here, temporarily. Again, we're gonna cap the blue wire off. We're not gonna use it. Put it away. Next, we're going to have the 14-2 black wire and a traveler 14-3. Put this all together. We're gonna splice them together. Now this black wire is being fed from the other box. So the power is transferred from the other box through this 14-3 black wire. We're going to attach that wire to the last final wire on the switch. Now I'm gonna temporarily tuck this in the box. Once you have everything installed, we are going to do a quick test before we fasten down the screws. I'm gonna put a electrical tape to cover the sensor on both switches. Now we're going to wait for the lights to time out. Okay, the one minute is up. The sensor timed out. I'm going to start off with the bottom switch first. So if I take off the tape, the motion sensor, okay, it kicked in. It sensed I was there. Now, we're going to do the same thing 
for this top switch. We're going to, we're going to wait for this to time out again. Okay, it has timed out. Now let's do the final test. So if we take off this electrical tape, it should turn on. Okay, it worked. Now let's take this one off. And right now, right now the both switches is currently on. I'm gonna press this to turn off. this one then the lights should turn off and it does now if I press that switch it'll stay on and it won't do anything it should not turn off If I press this, the light should not turn off since the other motion detector is on. But if I press this one, it should turn the lights off. And that's how you install two occupancy sensor switches to work at the same time. Thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and give this video a thumbs up. Peace out until next time.